mental illness is something that often features in the news and on our television screens. But what lies behind those headlines? And why should we care about getting it right? I think the portrayal of mental health issues is very, very important. People need to understand. Just generally in, in television drama, it's, it's a subject matter that is entitled. When they work, it's, you do get an amazing amount of response. Here in the UK, one in four of us will experience a mental health problem in any given year. But the way that mental health is dealt with by the media can often cause misconceptions about what we know are actually very common problems. The stigma around mental health is incredibly stifling and very difficult for people who, um, who have mental health conditions. Uh, the media can do something to help tackle that by reporting about it in a responsible way and also pointing out to people how common it is. There are millions of people in this country who are, who are experiencing problems and they live with those day, day by day and uh, quite often they won't ask for help, you know, because it is so stigmatised. For many people, the first exposure they may have to a mental health condition will be from their armchairs. Soaps and dramas that feature characters with these problems can have a positive impact, both on people recognising illness or feeling able to seek help. Now, one of the best-known storylines around mental health featured the characters Stacey and Jean Slater on EastEnders. Jean came in to explain why Stacey was so messed up, really. Then the idea was suggested that she was bipolar, and then that kind of developed from that point, and then that became Jean's story. It was wonderful to be able to um, be given an opportunity to play something that's got some depth to it and some um, degree of um, what, what I knew, what I found out, could, could go anywhere in terms of the dark side or, or the high side. I wish I'd never had kids. I wish I'd never been born. I wish I was dead. <laughs> Gillian has uh, worked so hard to create that and, and continues to kind of create that eccentric mood swing, which makes the condition so problematic, not only for the sufferer, but for those around the sufferer. We got a lot of research on it, and then I kind of read through all the research, and you're kind of underlining things, and you, there were things in there that became scenes, you know, and, and then kind of wrote a story from that. I spoke to uh, some specialists who deal with bipolar, so that I was in a place that um, I could act on as honestly as I could. Do you know what time it is? Late. Very late. Almost lunchtime. Knowing how complex and misunderstood mental illness it is, it, I, I can't say it was a pleasure, but it was a sort of privilege to be able to take that experience for the quality of my work, but also of other people's understanding. It's really interesting. You've got the exact same thing as me. Oh. What are you talking about, Mum? One of the ways you told the story is to um, have her exhibit the signs, early signs of bipolar, but not actually realise it. She's kind of promiscuous, she's spending too much money, she's hyper. All of those things could be just someone going off the rails and having a really good time. What is all this? This lot must have cost a fortune! And then I thought it'd be really interesting to do an episode where you're in her head. So we do an episode where you literally just start on her face. And, and the whole episode, you, we never leave her side, you're just with her and we shot it slightly differently. And... John made a very smart choice to shoot it handheld so that we have this unsteadiness this weird, unstable feeling that if you are in a depressive state and a desperate state, the world does not look the same as it should. All right, fine, you want your money, I'll go and get you now. In this case, the storyline had a really positive effect. Following the scenes where the character Stacey Slater was first diagnosed with bipolar disorder, the number of 18 to 24-year-olds calling a mental health helpline seeking help doubled. EastEnders won a Mind Media Award for this storyline. In 2011, long-running BBC show Casualty won the award for Best Drama for an episode that focused on one of the show's key characters, Dr Ruth Winters. The, I think the biggest, the biggest challenge of, of this episode was 
to present mental health in such a way that it didn't terrify uh, the viewer, you know, so that people who are watching this episode that might be experiencing some kind of problem, it has the effect of taking away the stigma from it. You didn't get it, did you? Get what? I get the clear sense you thought she should be discharged, but something stopped you. This just confirms everything I ever thought about mental health practitioners. The most kind of decisive research was we had two mental health advisors. We had a psychiatrist and a mental health nurse who both had, a, a, you know, an, a very, very kind of extensive body of work in mental health, both in the private and the public sector. Um, so they had kind of been absolutely everywhere and anywhere, and I worked with them very, very closely. What mental health as an issue allows a director to do is think, um, I think, a lot more visually than you would do for a normal storyline, because you can, you know, you're trying to find ways of filming sequences that get really inside the character and show the world from how how they're viewing it, you know. So inevitably, there are different ways of filming that you have to uh, you have to put in place. I think you know it's also about kind of a cultural thing. I think which is that in England, by and large, you know, you're kind of being encouraged to kind of keep a stiff upper lip, and you know, and and um, and carry on. And you know, if you get time off work with mental health, nobody sends you get well cards. I need you to help me. <laughs> Soaps have a unique ability to raise awareness of mental health problems. Coming into our front rooms every evening gives them the chance to engage with their audience unlike anything else. So, what are the key ways of getting it right? Start with a character that you really care about or create a character you really care about and that's interesting character. Because if you don't, it's just going to be an issue drama and no one's going to be involved emotionally. And if you're not involved emotionally, you might as well write an essay about it. Really. And the first thing is that research is everything, yeah. You have to know what you're writing about and not just academic research. You need to go and meet people. Talk to as many mental health uh, professionals as you can. Um, and also to go to uh, a psychiatric ward, just to kind of sit there and watch the way that it is. Mental illness shouldn't be a scary topic to handle. There are some amazing and inspiring stories to be told, and they shouldn't be shied away from. If you feel unsure of how to cover mental health problems, then Time to Change are here to help.